Um, so we're going to do some fermented vegetables, and this is the sort of thing you can do really easily at home. Um, we make loads of fermented vegetables here, particularly because we get lots of random um, vegetables that maybe are um, just about on the turn that we can keep for a much longer time. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any kind of made fermented vegetables before, but um, it seems scarier than it is, particularly because it's called lacto fermentation, which to me I was like, I don't know what that means. I just I don't. I'm not a scientist. Basically, lacto fermentation is, means lactic acid. So it's the way that the um, vegetables preserve in the water is that the um, anyone's a scientist, bear with. Let, feel free to jump in. <laughs> um, it's the bacteria um, that breaks down the sugars into lactic acid and that's what preserves them. Um, and there's a lot of kind of talk about how um, fermentation is good for your gut as well. So the way that the, the vegetables are preserved actually helps to um, increase the uh, vitamins and nutrients in them um, and they're really good for like maybe they create friendly bacteria for the gut. So really good and really delicious. It's a process that's um, been going on for thousands of years in loads of different forms, things like kimchi, sauerkraut, they're all types of fermented vegetable. Um, so today we're going to make some, um, we've got some here actually, that I just wanted to show if I can, um, of the sort of thing that we sell, it might not be a good idea because it's got liquid in it. Um, so this is asparagus, mushrooms, we've got some cabbage in here, so we do all sorts of different things and every time it's completely different and it tastes completely different, so it's um, great to kind of explore with what you've got. Um, so what we're going to do to start, I've got two jars sterilised ready, um, so just clean with soapy water and then poured boiling water into them to sterilise them. Um, and the kind of main way of making fermented vegetables is to make a brine, um, which is one litre of water, two tablespoons of salt. So that's it in the brine. I'm going to pour that in and just stir it. Now ideally you want to use filtered water or unchlorinated water in this. We've got a filtered water tap, so that's what I'm using here. If you don't have access to that, there's another way that you can make um, fermented vegetables, which is by washing your vegetables thoroughly. And then when you wash them, you sprinkle the salt directly onto them and then give them a good squeeze and all of the water from the vegetables will start to release and then you give them a squeeze again and then all the wa more water will release and it will get to the stage where all your vegetables will have enough water from the actual, um, that's come out of the actual vegetable that you'll be able to keep it in that brine. Um, but I've made it in the past with unfiltered water and it's been absolutely fine, it just doesn't have the same shelf life. So, I mean, it depends what you've got at home, but I wanted to make it, you know, everyone can do it at home. Um, so yeah, I would use either one of those methods. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, got a cauliflower here. Now the cauliflower leaves are really good in the, um, in the fermented vegetables. It's like a bit like using cabbage. Um, so what I tend to do is I pull the thinner parts off and you can keep these quite big because they'll kind of wilt down. And then we want to finely chop the actual, these bits. So I'm going to tilt down slightly. So I'm going to add these. These are carrots that I've already chopped up. So I'm going to add to the carrots. Feel free to ask questions as I'm going through. So I'm going to just already learned something. <laughs> can use the leaves of Do you know what the leaves of cauliflower are really good and they stay nice and crunchy too? So they're really good. You can use them in all cooking. Like I always use the cauliflower leaves when I'm making cauliflower cheese, um, making curry, anything like that. They're really delicious. In soup as well? Soup. We've got a very good uh, video on our blog, if you want, where, um, where we make a soup out of cauliflower uh, leaves. But you can also do the same with the leeks, you know, the greens of the leeks, um, oh, or yeah. broccoli. Yeah. So that you can use actually the whole vegetable and it's almost like a, a, free, a meal that is free because you know we often waste this but actually there's so much we can do. It's not, sometimes I really do think I cut too much mm -hmm. of my vegetables. Mm. Mm. Yeah, things like, I'm going to turn it back up again, <laughs> things like leeks 
a really good one. You can use the whole leek. Mm. Like, I think a lot of the time we, we, instead of washing, we chop things off. Yeah. But it's easier, because <laughs> it's, it's easier. But actually, if you kind of um, take the time to use the whole thing. And like, but if you're making... It's so hard as well. So, you know, the leeks, for example, the, the, the leeks, the, the end is really hard. So, mm. we well, just... Yeah, yeah, you can cook it for longer, or you can kind of do this. So you've got some scraps mm -hmm. left over from cooking. Keep them all to one side, and then make some fermented vegetables. And then you can flavour these with whatever you want. So we've got a mixture which we like here, which is some caraway seeds mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. some red peppercorns. You can use anything you want. You can use black peppercorns, white peppercorns. Um, make some kimchi and use some red um, Korean red pepper flakes. Um, it's all kind of like depending on what you like. Uh, some ginger's nice in there, some garlic. Things of ginger and garlic, you want to chop them quite finely or crush them um, so that the flavour gets into the brine and gets into all the vegetables as opposed to just eating a whole garlic clove, which you can do. Um, so I'm just going to um, cut these up. They're in little florets here. You can make everything similar sized, but it's not, there's no magic rule in it really. So. So it's nice to have a few colours and textures in here. Um, so I'm going to just use a selection. So we've got a red pepper, which again, something that we had in surplus. So actually talking about fruits and vegetables, uh, we also got like, um, like for our, uh, our deliveries is, uh, you know, a box of fruits and vegetables that we sell. And we do have leeks. Um, we've got leeks, cabbage, um, you know, parsley, um, many different type of things that uh, actually can be used uh, uh, fully. So, so some fruits and vegetables that can be cooked, that, that can be um, eaten raw directly. Or, um, and we, um, so Beth creates every week uh, some new recipe that you write down on the blog as well to go with the box and what's in season mm -hmm. um, so that there is a bit of a new uh, mm -hmm. inspiration for, for people who don't know what to do with the fruits and veg uh, available like for instance last week uh, you did a video about artichoke yes artichokes yes. that's another one that people get and they're like <laughs> um, they're <laughs> can be scary <laughs> so now we've got the um, vegetables I've got a selection of veg that I'm going to use um, and I'm just going to season with a good sprinkle of the caraway seeds and a good sprinkle of the red pepper seeds, red uh, peppercorn. And then we're going to start. I'm going to just wash my hands. Look, you can look at those vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see. Okay, so now we're going to start putting them into jars. And the rule of putting vegetables into the jar is that you want to take out as much air as possible. So you want to really push them in. Mm. As much as you can, break them down. Because you want the brine to cover them completely. If there's any um, veg exposed, um, it can um, go mouldy because they're not covered in the brine. So just make sure when you're doing it, use a little at a time use a spoon but I like to use your hand because you can really push it down so get as many vegetables in as possible and it's surprising how much you can get in it looks beautiful as well mm. with yeah, lots of colors definitely and this is the sort of thing that like you know we used to serve it on canapes with um, crackers um, with hummus it's really delicious in sandwiches mm. if you've got a bit of chili in there you can have it on the side of like curries and chilies and mm. whatever you want they're very versatile um, so I think we're nearly reaching the top I'm just gonna leave about half an inch so keep pushing down <laughs> All my weight's good on that. <laughs> okay. So, got about half an inch there from the top. And then we're going to cover it with the water. So that's just water, one litre of water, so two tablespoons of salt. And you can reduce that depending on how big the jar is. So you can see that it's bubbling slightly. You just want to make sure that all of the vegetables are nicely covered and that there's a little bit of a gap at the top because basically 
when you put the lid on now, we're going to leave this to ferment at room temperature for around about two to three days. Now it really depends on the heat of your um, your kitchen. At the moment, it'll take about two to three days based on the average British kitchen right now. But if your kitchen's hotter, it will take less time, cooler, longer. The way to check is, so you want to put the lid on. This is why you want the gap. Basically, the fermented vegetables will start to burp, they'll start to bubble. Um, and the, new, the way you'll know it's done is that it will have bubbles on the top when you look into the jar after a couple of days and start to smell nice and tangy that kind of classic fermented um, vegetable smell you'll know it when you smell it compared to now which doesn't smell much it smells a bit fresh crunchy vegetables um, you'll start to smell it and the reason you want the gap is that it can sometimes bubble over the mm. fermentation will bubble over so you just want to leave enough of a gap so I'm gonna leave that now um, in a dark place but like I wouldn't leave it on in the sunlight I'd leave it you know in a cupboard um, for two days give it a check give it um, watch for another day and then that can go into the fridge um, it's uh, ready to eat straight away after the um, once it's um, fermented but it will last for as long as a year maybe longer if you keep it um, safely so make sure that you use a clean spoon when you take it out uh, and that you make sure all the vegetables remain covered by the brine so don't remove any of the brine that's really good there to preserve them um, and then you're done <laughs> And there are many techniques like kimchi as well, exactly. where you can add some different spices. Yeah, so the kimchi is a classic, which is um, Chinese um, Chinese leaf. It's called um, napa cabbage and um, Korean pe um, pepper flakes. Um, you can put all different things in there. Be creative with what you've got in your house. Um, things like uh, I put some sriracha in some kimchi at home because I didn't have any Korean flakes. Um, some gochujang, some ginger, anything you've got really. Feel free for any questions, guys. That's absolutely fascinating. Thank you.